and welcome to a new open class. Today we uh, are holding open class number 148, where we are going to be talking about uh, rush to manipulation, more specifically how to do motion planning using uh, C++, uh, using uh, creating a C++ script and through the C++ API for for the move group interface. So. Mm, Yeah, uh, welcome everybody, and uh, let's hope that uh, we can have a nice uh, open class and that uh, you enjoy it and uh, you learn a lot. So yeah, let's go for it. Let me not lose any more time and uh, switch already to my uh, computer uh, screen. There we go. Let me have a quick look at the chat. Okay, no messages so far. So uh, let me know if everything is fine, sound is fine, image is fine. I can see here that everything uh, is okay, apparently. So uh, I'm going to, to trust this. And um, yeah, so welcome everybody. And uh, as always, let's get uh, started. Maybe audio a bit low, is saying Ignacio. You can, you can tune the volume here. I don't know, maybe, maybe you can You can uh, increase it a little bit locally. If not, maybe I can I can try to adjust here a little bit as well. So um, let me see. Yeah, maybe I can. Yeah, now now it's a little bit uh, higher the volume. So I it should be better. All right, then, uh, yeah, so as always, the first thing to do is to get uh, today's project, okay? In case that uh, you are new, in order to get the project for uh, this class, you have to click on this button here, the one that you have right above the chat, which says fork and open the class project. So uh, this is the button. I'm going to click here uh, myself right now. And uh, this is going to basically create a copy of the project into your account, all right? So first of all, you are going to uh, have a copy of this project forever, yeah? That, that one's for you. You are going to be able to use it whenever you want. And then, as you can see, it's also going to automatically uh, open this project and take you to the project page where uh, we are going to be able to, to do the class, all right? So, uh, as I always say, this is an interactive class, okay? So, you are supposed to uh, practice, meanwhile. Yeah, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be uh, explaining, of course, here uh, some concepts related to, to motion planning. But uh, these classes are uh, practice-based, yeah? So, uh, they always have uh, a lot of practice. And the idea of this is that you can practice yourself also. Yeah, so that's why you get a copy of the project so that uh, you can basically reproduce everything that I'm going to be doing. You can do it as well from, from your computer. And uh, yeah, so that's the idea uh, for this class. Now uh, we have to wait uh, some seconds here until everything gets properly loaded. And uh, yeah, in case that you have any problem copying the project, opening the project, whatever questions during the class, please write them here in the chat because I'm going to be checking here uh, whatever you, you, you write in the chat. All right? So let me get some coffee. Meanwhile, I wait for my project to load. So is it better the audio now, Ignacio? Yes, a bit better, thanks. Okay, perfect. All right, so here my project has finished loading and as you can see, the notebook opens here automatically. All right. So make sure that you have the proper uh, notebook, the one for class number 148, okay? 
And uh, yeah, so I'm going to give some extra seconds here uh, for you. But uh, as you can see, the first thing that we are going to do is to launch uh, a simulation. Yeah, so we are going to be working with a UR 3 e robot, the one that you have here in the picture from Universal Robots. You have it here. So we are going to be working with this uh, robot. And uh, as you can see also, the simulation is uh, in ROS1. Yeah? Hence, we are using a ROS launch command. Okay? So the simulation is ROS1, but we are going to uh, do and create our program for ROS2. Okay? Therefore, therefore, we are going to be using in between the ROS1 bridge to, to do this uh, connection between ROS1 and ROS2 messages, okay? We'll see that in a moment. But the first thing to do is to uh, launch the simulation. So for this, we are going to open a new shell, a new terminal, by clicking on this icon here in the bottom uh, bar, this first one. So by clicking here, we are going to open a new empty uh, shell. And here, we are going to be able to uh, type any uh, command. In this case, we are going to run these two that we have here in the notebook. Okay, so I suggest that you directly copy them from the uh, notebook like this. You can select uh, the desired command, copy it, and then just paste it into a terminal like this, which is going to save you some time. And then let's run uh, the ROS launch command to start the simulation. There we go. So this is going to start Gazebo and all the, the processes related to, to it. And after uh, some seconds, after all the processes finish uh, loading, you should get a gazebo simulation like this one. Yeah. So as you can see, it's an empty world here with a, a UR3E robot uh, in the middle. So meanwhile, meanwhile, this simulation loads. Let me just uh, introduce you to the uh, ROS2 manipulation basics course. Okay. So uh, this class, uh, let's say that it's going to cover a part of uh, ROS2 manipulation, but uh, we are going to see a small part, yeah? So uh, in case that you want to uh, learn more and get all, all the background, uh, so, so here I'm going to, to, to do some things for granted, okay? So in case that you want to, to uh, keep learning more uh, about it, I left you here the link to the course on ROS2 manipulation basics, which by the by the way, we did uh, an upgrade to this course la last week, okay? So we improved uh, some things like uh, connection of the gripper with MoveIt, uh, uh, also some improvements in the C++ scripts, etc. So uh, yeah, in this course, you are going to find uh, all the steps like uh, how to create the MoveIt2 package from zero, which we are not going to be covering today, okay? So uh, we are going to start already with a configure it, move it to package in this case, all right? Okay, so yeah, here we should uh, see the simulation loaded. There we go, okay. Yeah, so here we have our simulation. Perfect. So the first thing we are going to do before starting is to uh, test uh, our move it to package. Okay, so as I have just said, uh, for this class, uh, we are starting with a configured movie to package. Okay, so we are um, we are taking this for granted. We are not going to cover how to create the movie to package and so on. So uh, here we are going to use one that I have already prepared for you. All right. So um, for instance, let's uh, open the code editor at this point, which is the the icon that you have here at the side of the of the shell icon right here. If you click here, this is going to open the code editor, which uh, is going to allow you to visualize uh, uh, through a graphical interface all the folders, files, etc. that this ROSJEC contains. In this case, uh, we are going to be working here in the ROS2 workspace, okay? So if you go inside this ROS2 workspace uh, and inside the SRC folder, you're going to see uh, that you already have some packages here that are already provided to you. The most important one here probably is this one, which is the Move It to configuration package, okay? Then uh, we are going to start by testing that this package uh, works okay. 
Yeah, because if you don't have a movie to package properly configured and working, it's not going to be possible to, to, to communicate with it through the API, right? So the first uh, thing that you need, and uh, this is a mandatory thing, you need to have a movie to package properly configured for your robot, okay? Then um, we are going to, uh, in this case, test this, but before being able to test the movie to package, we need to set up the uh, ROS1 bridge, right? So we are going to need to, to set up, um, we are going to use, in this case, two nodes for this. One is a parameter bridge, which uh, we are going to use to bridge some important topics, like the TF topic, uh, joint states topic, and then we are going to use also a an action bridge to, to bridge the action servers which are used to communicate with the ARM and gripper controllers. Okay, then let's go step by step. So first of all, we are going to run these commands in order to run the parameter bridge, okay? So uh, for this, let's leave here uh, in the first shell our simulation running, okay? Don't stop it or close it because we need uh, the simulation running here. So we are going to open a new shell like I have just done by clicking on this plus icon. And then in this uh, new shell, we are going to run the parameter bridge. So let's just start here executing these commands. So first of all, we source our Catkin workspace and we run one launch file which we use here to load uh, some parameters, okay? Very quickly, very quickly, uh, what we are doing here basically, as you can see, it's to, it's to uh, launch this launch file, load params launch, and this launch file basically what it, uh, it's doing is to load a parameters file here, and this parameter file contains which topics I want to bridge from ROS1 to ROS2. So you're going to see that uh, we are bridging joint states topic, a clock topic, also TF related topics, as you can see, okay? So uh, once we load these uh, parameters, uh, then we can now run the parameter bridge here, right here, in order to bridge this to ROS2, yeah? There we go. So we need to wait uh, some seconds here until this, but meanwhile, we can open a third shell because we are going to need uh, another one, yet another one. So here, for instance, if we run a ROS2 to topic list, we are going to see that we have no topics for now, just parameter events and ROS out, which are the default topics. But now, right now, which the parameter bridge node has already been loaded. If I run again a ROS2 topics topic list, I'm going to be able to see the topics that I am bridging, yeah? Here we can see clock, joint states, TF, and TF static. These are the topics that I am bridging from uh, the simulation, which is running in ROS1 to ROS2, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do also in order to, to have this more organized is to uh, name my shell so that I know what I have running in each one. So for instance, in this first one, I'm going to name it a simulation. This second one, I'm going to rename it as parameter bridge. And then in, this, in the third one is where I'm going to run the action bridge, okay? So in this case, what I want to run, so right now I can check the, the actions available in ROS2. I'm going to see none, right? So what I'm going to do now is to bridge also a couple of action servers that I need from ROS1 in order to connect with the uh, ARM and gripper controllers, yeah, which are action servers. So let's run these commands here in the action bridge. Uh, let's start by doing the proper sources. There we go. And then... Uh, 
All right. So let's rename this shell to action bridge. There we go. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And then we are going to open yet another shell. Okay, this is the last one, I promise. And basically here, uh, what I'm going to run is movie two. So I'm going to rename it to movie two. Perfect. So now, for instance, if I run here ROS to action list, I'm going to see a couple of actions, right? I have the action for the uh, controllers of the arm and a second action for the controllers of the gripper, right? And uh, we can have a very quick look uh, at this launch file if you want. I'm not going to cover the details anyways. So this launch file, as you can see, it's from start bridge package that you have already here. And inside the launch folder, you are going to find this start bridge.launch.py file. <coughs> Sorry. Then here, in this launch file, as you can see, what I am doing is to basically start two action bridge nodes and each one of them is uh, creating the bridge for a one action server. Yeah, so the first one is bridging this action server, which is named arm, arm controller for joint trajectory. And the second action bridge node, it's bridging this second action, which is gripper controller, gripper CMD. Okay, so this is why I have now access from ROS2 to these two action servers, okay? And I need them, I need them because uh, Movie 2 is going to communicate with these action servers, okay? In order to control the robotic arm that we have in the simulation. Well, in this case, we are going to only connect with the arm controller, okay? Not the gripper, but uh, yeah. So in case that we would... Uh, want to, to communicate and to control the gripper from movie 2, we, we are going to need also this one. But in this live class, this is not covered, okay? This is covered, for instance, in the, in the, in the course, but not, uh, not today. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so the last step now is to just uh, start the movie package and verify and check that it's working as expected. So let's source our ROS2 workspace and uh, run the uh, movie 2 package here, which is uh, my movie 2 config. This is the name of the package and the name of the launch file, which is my planning execution.launch.py. Then I'm setting to start RVs also automatically so that I have a uh, movie graphical interface. All right. So uh, again, after some seconds, we should see the graphical tools here being opened. Perfect. Okay. And now from here, I can uh, try to set some uh, goals for the arm to check that everything is working as expected. Yeah. So uh, for instance, let's try to change here the goal state. Okay. So uh, just to make it clear, I'm here in the planning tab. Okay. So you should be in this tab by default in any case. Then uh, here, I'm going to change the goal state. Yeah, so let's open here the different options and I'm going to select the home position. Yeah, this is a predefined position that has been created while, uh, while I was generating the, generating the movie to package. Then if you set this home position as goal state, you are going to see that the goal state changes, okay? And now we can hit here in the plan button, for instance, and move it, uh, move it to should plan a trajectory to reach this goal position. See? And as you can see, it shows this trajectory. Yeah? So this is the current position with the arm in horizontal, as you can see. And my goal position is this one, which is displayed in an orange color. And uh, whenever you hit plan here, Move it, it uh, calculates uh, all the uh, inverse kinematics, etc., and then it uh, generates a trajectory to reach this goal position, and then you can visualize it here, as you can see. So this is the trajectory that Move it has 
calculated uh, for us. Then, if we are happy enough with, with the trajectory, we can hit here in the execute button. Okay. Now, as you can see, for now I have just planted the trajectory, right? So the arm here in the simulation has not moved at all. It's a static. So in order to actually uh, move the arm, I need to execute the trajectory. Yeah. So the first step is to plan the trajectory. And then if I want to actually uh, apply this trajectory, I need to execute it by hitting here in the execute button. Right? So let me click here right now. And as soon as I click here, as you can see, the trajectory is executed by the arm. It's executed here in the simulation. Yeah? So far, so good. Have you been able to reproduce the steps until this point? Yes, no? Ignacio Fidalgo says, when planning with RRT, sometimes it gets an error message unable to sample any valid states. Yeah, so sometimes depending on the trajectory, depending on the planner you use, etc., you might encounter some issues still. But... Um, Uh, working fine and yes, fine. Okay. Yeah, so here, here we have, as you can see here, we are getting a failed, uh, although the arm has actually reached the position, right? This is due to timeouts, execution timeouts, okay? So uh, don't worry right now. We, we, can, we can change the execution timeouts and so on to, to avoid this kind of messages. But, uh, but yeah, so for now, we can leave it like this and forget about this. Just ignore it because the trajectory is being executed properly. So yeah. OK. Then, um, yeah, so uh, before, before moving on, let's, let's uh, move back the robot to its previous position, okay? So we are going to move it back to the horizontal position. And in order to do this, what I'm going to do is just to change again the goal state, and I'm going to set it to previous, yeah? So if I change the goal state to uh, previous, see, the goal state is now the previous one that I had, which is the arm in horizontal. And now I'm going to, in this case, so. Uh, in the first uh, try, we did first plan and then execute. But you have the option also to do both at the same time with this plan and execute uh, button. Yeah, so this is going to generate the plan, compute the plan, and then it's going to automatically execute it. So I'm going to hit this. Yeah, so the plan is, is planned, the trajectory is planned, and it's executed at, at the same time. Okay. All right, that crush it. What crush it? Be it? Yeah, so let's let's try to leave the arm as it was at the beginning, like this, horizontal. So we have we have uh, checked that we can uh, use move it and uh, well, it just doesn't go all the way to the start. Stop it halfway for no reason. Yeah, this is because of the yeah. So you might have these uh, issues because of the execution timeouts. Okay. See, so we are getting these uh, timeout widgets in the execution phase. Okay. So, uh, but I, I would say just to ignore it because I don't want to start here modifying files and so on because properly it's going to be uh, 
more complicated for you to follow. Yeah, so we would have to start changing parameters here in the launch files and so on, and I want to try to avoid that. So, so just uh, don't worry, okay, about these execution errors. Just keep in mind that our execution errors, because basically these errors are because um, Movie 2 is expecting to have the execution finish it uh, by after some seconds, and in this case, it's, ta it's taking longer than that. Okay, because of the current configuration of the movie to package, so it's complaining. But yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's not so important at this point, so, so, so. Why do you never use Colcon? What do you mean? I never use Colcon? Sam? Yeah, so so I'm going to run. Yeah, as as bait says, uh, we 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 are going to use Colcon in case that we want to compile, uh, build something. In this case, we don't want to build anything. So the packages that we are testing are already compiled, are already built. So we don't need to to rebuild them. Okay, so now let's move. Let's let's keep advancing. All right. Because uh, now we are going to create a new package, so we are going to have to, to build this new package at some point. So, so yeah, this tool, as you can see, so right now we have been interacting with Movit through the GUI, through the RVs uh, panel, which is very interesting also. But, but what we are going to do uh, now is to actually interact with Movit in a similar way as we what we have been doing here, but through a C++ script. Yeah, so we are going to, to use the move group C++ interface, which allows us to interact, to talk with uh, our movie to package from a script. Okay? Then this is the script that we are going to be using. Yeah, this is the example script, a very basic uh, a script that uh, we can review together here in a moment. But uh, I'm going to skip for now all this section, okay? Uh, I'm going to explain uh, in a moment this, but, but let's uh, skip this for now and move a little bit down here in the notebook until this section, which says, let's create the files and launch them, okay? So let's move to this section here. And uh, so, at this point, you can already stop move it here if you want. So I'm going to stop it myself. Control C, and you you can leave the bridges opened here. Okay, so don't close them. Leave them here open. And now, um, actually, I'm going to open another shell. Okay, I'm going to leave this one for uh, later because I will need to uh, start move it to again. So I'm going to work here in a new blank shell. And the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new ROS2 package, okay? So let's run the commands here. So we source ROS2, and we go inside the ROS2 workspace SRC folder, okay? And inside this folder, we are going to execute this third command, which is the uh, package create command. We are going to create a new package, ROS2 package named movie scripts with the following dependencies. Yeah, for move it. So let's execute this. And then uh, you're going to see that a new package appears here in your workspace. Yeah, this move it to scripts. Then you can also visualize it here, in fact, uh, using the code editor. Yeah, here you have the package move it to scripts. So now, what we are going to do is to create a new CPP script. Yeah, you can create it here using the shell, like it's explained in the notebook here, or you can create it manually, like this. Yeah, so you can come here to the SRC folder, right click on it and select new file. I'm going to do it like this, and then you write the name for the new file, which is going to be test underscore trajectory dot CPP. 
<clears throat> okay? Now, into this file, we are going to copy and paste the contents of the script that you have here. Yeah? This test trajectory is CPP. You are going to select all the contents of this script, like this. Let's select everything. Copy it and paste it into the script. Okay? So now we have our script test trajectory CPP with uh, the proper code. Okay? Perfect. Then, um, yeah, so we can, we can have a look now if you want at this. Let's have a quick look uh, of the different parts of the script. So, first of all, as you can see, we are doing some includes, some imports of different uh, header files that we need. Then uh, we have a couple of static variables here for uh, the defining a logger and for defining the name of our planning group for the arm, which is your manipulator in this case. Then uh, we are creating a class, a new class, which inherits from node. Then uh, for this class, we need to initialize a move group for the arm and a joint model group for the arm as well. Okay, this is, this uh, move group arm is the one that is going to uh, allow you to interact with the move it to package. Yeah, it's, let's say, the most important part and it's, you can find its definition here. Down here in the private area, you are going to find this move group arm, which is basically an object of move group interface. Okay? This is the interface that is going to allow you to communicate with move group. Yeah? Move group is the main node of move it to. All right? And we have a joint model group also. This joint model group arm that we are also initializing here, which basically contains the information of the joints of my arm, of my robotic arm. Okay? Then this is the constructor of the class, and inside the constructor, we are also creating a timer. Yeah? A timer which has one callback function associated to it, which is this timer callback. Yeah? Then we are defining uh, here uh, some methods for our class. The first one is this getInfo method, which basically, as you can see, it's just printing out some information uh, by using the move group uh, arm, yeah, which is uh, a move group interface object. Then using uh, this, we can access different functions. For instance, we can uh, call a function named getPlanningFrame which is going to return which is the current planning frame. Or get end effector link, which is going to give a, uh, it's going to return the end effector link of my planning group. Yeah? So these are different functions that you can call in order to get information of your uh, move group setup. All right? Then, for instance, uh, you can come here. I have left here, uh, down here. So here you have also in the notebook explanations about the different sections. But if you scroll down here, you're going to find a link right here. Yeah. Where you are going to uh, see all the functions that you can call. Yeah. So you can see here that uh, you can call many, many different functions. Okay, for instance, get planning frame, which is the one that we are using in our code. Yeah, but you, you have access to many, many, many functions. Okay, through this move group interface. Then uh, let's go back to our code. So we have this get info method that we are using in order to get some basic information. Then we have a current state method yeah, which basically this, what it's doing is to get the current state of the robot. Uh, specifically, it's getting the current state of the joints of the robot. So what is the current configuration of the joints of the robot? Yeah, so we are getting this information here using the get current state and then copy joint group positions. So we are getting the current state of my uh, robot, of the robotic arm, 
and then we are copying the joint configuration from joint model group arm, group arm to joint group positions arm. Yeah? Because we are going to later use this variable to update the joint position. Okay? Then this takes us to our next method, which is this one. Plan arm joint state. Here, as you can see, I am directly modifying these joint group position arms. And I am modifying the position of the joints. Yeah, I am changing the position of the uh, joints, the positions that the joints currently have, and I am changing their value. Okay? Then once I have changed the value of uh, the positions of, my, of the joints of the robotic arm, I set these new positions as target. Okay? So I am setting these new positions of the joints of the arm as the new target position. So as the new goal position, let's say. Okay? And then finally, I am calling the function plan. For my move group arm again, I am calling the function plan. Yeah? So I set these new joint positions as uh, a goal, and then I plan a trajectory to reach this new goal. Okay? This is what I am doing right here in this function, yeah? So I am updating the position of my joints, I am defining these new positions as target, as the new goal, and then I am planning for this goal. Only planning, okay? Note that I am calling the function plan. Okay, the function plan, if you look for the function here, for instance, um, plan, should be somewhere here. Plan, yeah? Here you have the, 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 the definition of this function, which is the one that we are calling, yeah? So compute a motion plan that takes the group declared in the constructor from the current state to the specified target. No execution is performed. Okay, this is important to note that the plan function is not going to execute the trajectory. It's just going to calculate, to compute uh, a trajectory. So basically, plan to current position? No, no. No, no, we are not planning to the current position. Because we are changing here the position, okay? So le let's see what we are doing here, okay? So if we have a, uh, a look here at the time mark callback, here is where I have placed the logic, okay? So the logic here, the first line is that I am canceling the timer, okay? So that uh, my timer callback is only going to be executed one time, okay? This is what this line is doing. Then I get basic info, yeah, which is the first method here to get some basic information about my move group setup. Then I call the current state method to get the current state of my robotic arm and the current, the current state of my joints. Yeah, so here I am getting the current state of my joints, the current positions of my joints. And then finally I call this plan arm joint space. And here I am changing the positions of the joints. Okay? And then I set these new positions as target. So I am planning to reach these new positions of my joints. Yeah? Well, it's a plan to these joint positions. If these joint positions are the same, are the sa have the same values of the home position, then yes. But if you change this, then no. Okay? So in this case, these joint uh, positions are uh, the same ones that the home position has. Okay? In this case, yes. But you can change these values, and then it's not going to plan to the home position. Yeah, do you understand this? Do they have a reason? No, 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 no reason at all. 
just uh, I use these ones, but you can use any others. I mean, as long as long as they are as long as they are uh, reachable, yeah, then uh, no no problem at all. You can you can try after if you want uh, with different values, and and you will see that the position is going to change. Okay. Okay, then finally here in the private section, we have just the, the declaration of all the different uh, attributes, variables that I am using in the class. And finally, I have my main, main function where uh, I, I uh, create my node. I also create a single thread executor, okay? And then I add my node to my single thread executor, and finally, I spin my executor. Yeah? It's just a setting. I meant if it was basically to set an initial plan to a home initial position in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so usually, usually you are, you are uh, going to, to, to put your arm to an initial uh, position, home position, something like this. So that's why here we are, uh, we are using the same values of the home position. Yeah, but you can, you can, uh, you can try any other values. I mean, it's it's not important for this. But you need to know which values you are putting here. Okay, you cannot put any values. So you, you have to more or less know what you are doing. I mean, uh, so you cannot uh, put values here of a position which is impossible to reach. For instance, a position which is under the ground, so you have to know the joint limitations, etc. Okay? All right, then, um, yeah, so basically this is the uh, script. Uh, no, no, uh, it's pretty simple what we are doing here. Then uh, let's continue, let's continue uh, here. So we have created our CPP script, and then uh, next thing is to create our launch file, okay? So uh, in our movie to scripts package, we are going to, first of all, we need to create a new folder, okay? We are going to create a new folder named launch, and inside this folder, we are going to create a new file named test trajectory dot launch dot pi okay and then inside this uh, new file we are going to copy and paste the contents of uh, the notebook here yeah so here you have the contents of this launch file in the notebook so let's one more time copy here the contents and select everything copy and paste into my file okay so here I have my uh, launch file, yeah? So uh, very quickly uh, here, uh, basically what we are doing is to set up some parameters related to, to movie that I need. A load, for instance, the URDF file of the robot, load the uh, controller's configuration. It's uh, done uh, somewhere uh, down here. Uh, let me find it. SRDF. Oh no, of course. Here, here we don't need to load the controllers. Yeah, yeah. Forget what I am saying. The controllers are loaded in the movie to package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, here what uh, I am doing is to load some uh, parameters that I need, and then uh, right here, what I am doing is to start my node. Yeah, so I am loading here uh, uh, from my movie to package. I am loading an executable which is named test trajectory. Okay, then uh, of course the final step I need to do is to create this executable. Yeah, so in order to generate this executable, I need to basically update my CMakeList.txt file, right? So that on compilation time, I'm going to generate my new executable. 
So again, let's copy here the contents that you have in the notebook. Let's open the CMakeList.txt file of our movie 2 scripts package. And uh, down here, right before the end, for instance, you, we can paste this, okay? So uh, what I am doing here is just to generate a new executable named test trajectory from the CPP script that I have just created. Yeah? From this CPP script that uh, we have created, we are generating an executable named test trajectory. And this test trajectory executable is the one that I am running here in my launch file, right? Then um, I install my new executable and also I am installing the launch directory of my package. Yeah, I need to do this so that my Rust2 system can detect this launch file. Yeah, so I need to install the launch folder and of course uh, the launch files which are inside this launch folder. Okay, so uh, now, now uh, we are ready to compile, okay? So uh, now we are going to actually use Colcon because we need to compile our new package. Then, uh, very important, remember to uh, don't compile here in the src folder, okay? For compiling, you have to be in the root of your workspace, home user ros to workspace. So from here, we can run Colcon build and uh, compile uh, our workspace. Yeah, so it's building here my movie to scripts package. Fifty percent. We are almost there. It's taking a, a little bit of time to compile this. Yeah. This, is, this is because the instances that uh, we uh, are using here for the open classes are limited. Yeah, so compilation times are longer here. So let's just be a little bit patient. Yeah. There we go, 100%. So it should finish anytime uh, now. There we go. Yeah, so, uh, okay, yeah, so we are getting here um, a warning just for an unused variable, so this sucks as arm, so you can just ignore it. And then after compilation, very important, remember to source your workspace, okay? Great, so, uh, yeah, what we, are, what we are going to do now is to relaunch again uh, Movie 2. Yeah, so let's relaunch again uh, our Movie 2 uh, package. There we go. Okay. And now we are doing we are going to execute our uh, script. Okay? So what our script should do now is uh, very similar to what we did previously using RVs, right? So previously if you remember we set a goal state from here then we set this goal state for there and then we click the plan button to plan this trajectory, right? So now we are going to do this, but from a C++ script, yeah? So we are going to set a target, a goal target position, and then I'm going to plan for this position. So let me uh, come here to the uh, notebook and get exactly the command, which is this one. So let's run our test trajectory uh, executable. So rush to launch, move it to scripts, test trajectory dot launch dot pi. Then uh, if everything goes fine, I should see in Airvis as well, 
how my plan is computed. There we go. So as you can see, move it, uh, move group, more uh, precisely, move group has received the instructions to set this new target and to plan for it. So that's why I am seeing uh, this planet trajectory here in movie two, but this time I am doing everything from a C++ script. All right? And I am planning for this uh, goal trajectory. And if you change the values from here, you are going to see that the trajectory planet is uh, different, is for another target position, okay? Great, so we are going to do one last thing, yeah? Then uh, let me uh, actually stop my script. I'm going to actually stop uh, movie two also. And let's see one last thing, which is executing a trajectory, also from the script. So as you can see, uh, with the plan function, what you are doing is to plan a trajectory. So if you actually want to execute that trajectory, you need to use the execute function, yeah? So you can copy directly this line from here, from the notebook, and paste it uh, into the test trajectory CPP script here right after the planning, yeah? So first I do the plan, and then I execute my plan which is stored here in this variable, yeah? So now, after planning the trajectory, I'm going to tell uh, move it to also execute it, okay? So for this, I'm going to need to recompile, right? So uh, let's get back here and recompile my script because I have made some changes. So we need to recompile So my arm, of course, in the simulation has not moved at all because I was just planning. There we go. Let's source again. Okay, and then I'm going to need to uh, start one more time uh, my movie to package. I need I need to start uh, movie two because movie two, my movie two package is the one that uh, provides that starts the move group node, right? And I need the move group node because uh, here through my move group arm through my move group interface, yeah, what I am doing is to connect, to uh, communicate, let's say, with the move group node in order to uh, ask him for things, for plans, for trajectory, trajectory executions, etc. Yeah? So if I don't start uh, my move group node, of course, uh, it's not possible to run any of this. All right, then uh, let's run uh, one last time uh, here our test trajectory uh, executable with the updated line where I am calling the execute function in order to execute the planet trajectory. So let's run this. And now I should see one more time my trajectory being planet, but right after the trajectory is planet, also the trajectory is going to be executed by move group, as you can see. Okay. And there we go. So, um, so yeah, we have seen how to create a move group interface object in order to communicate, to connect with the move group node, which is the main node from MoveIt. 
and uh, how to uh, we can communicate uh, how we can use this move group interface in order to call some methods to get information for instance from uh, move group to plan trajectories or to execute them okay there are different ways of planning trajectories like you can plan a trajectory instead of specifying joint positions you can plan a trajectory specifying an end effector pose for instance all right also for instance we have not not uh, done it but you can also use the move function the move function basically is going to plan and execute a motion okay it's just uh, it's like a combination of the plan function with the execute function okay you can uh, test it uh, now uh, after this uh, open class finishes if you want but uh, yeah basically uh, so i'm going to leave it here and uh, remember that uh, all this uh, in case that you want to to keep learning more you are interested in this subject and you want to learn uh, more like like how to do different uh, plannings like planning for the end effector or uh, how to interact with the gripper through move it etc etc how to grasp objects etc uh, i have left you here a link to uh, the uh, complete ros2 manipulation basics course okay where uh, all these topics are going to be explained much more in detail or for instance how to create this uh, movie to package that we have been launching and using yeah because in this class uh, we have not explained this but in the course you are going to find how to create uh, a movie to package from zero all right so um yeah basically that's it so i'm going to uh, leave it here and uh, before closing let me very quickly um activate here uh, my the rate form like i am doing in the in the last classes i want to activate here this rate form which uh, let me come back here it should appear here in the chat in a few seconds right when i activate it uh, here there we go so uh, please take a moment it's going to take you literally one second or less to just uh, rate this presentation if you liked it if not so that we can get uh, some feedback in order to improve for future open classes all right so uh yeah basically uh, that's it uh, thanks a lot for all of you for coming for writing here in the chat and uh, having some interaction i hope that you that you uh, have enjoyed this class that you have learned uh, at least uh, something and that you can take something from this hour and uh, yes uh, as always i will see you again uh, next well no actually no next tuesday uh, we are not going to have open class we are not going to actually have open class for the uh, next two weeks but uh, we will come back probably in three weeks okay so keep this in mind and uh, i will see you uh, in uh, my return and until then as always keep pushing your ross learning bye bye